Wexler. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to a very special episode of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors with myself, Jackie Jones, and the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook, episode 156. Wow. Yeah, three times 52. I was going to say, we had to work that out, didn't we, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got there eventually. We did. You were just confirming what I thought. But yeah, three, I can't believe that three years have gone. We've been doing this through the pandemic. We started this. Oh, way before. Yeah, of course. Before that, we've been we've been to hell and back during this three years, Bob. Yeah, we certainly have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe personally yeah. as well as professionally. Um, so what we're going to be talking about in this one is judgments and assumptions within the therapy process. Yeah, and before we get on with that, um, what's a rather marvellous podcast, by the way, but before, I was thinking back on how these podcasts started. And um, I can't remember if I'm sure... Did I ask you to do these therapy podcasts or did you ask me how, or did we have a collective? How did do you remember how we? I think you put a plea out. I think it was through a mutual friend of ours, Sari. Oh, yes. And I yes. think you'd uh, approached her to possibly uh, do it. Right. And she, yeah. she didn't have time or couldn't for that's whatever right. reason. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I thought it'd be great to do a therapeutic podcast. And then I asked you and you came up with the title. I yeah. didn't come up. Yes. Well, again, I think everything's been a collaboration, Bob. I would have run it past you. I wouldn't have said this is. What I think doing. it's a great title. I've got really used to it now. <laughs> Me too. It rolls off the tongue. I never struggle with it. Yeah. And I'm talking about this. This sounds ridiculous, but we've been doing this for three years, and it's only recently that I've been telling people that I do this. No. Yeah, it's not. It's not something that really comes up in conversation. Whereas just lately, I'm I'm saying it to a lot of people. Oh, good. I when I first started and we we did that first podcast um, about an introduction of the podcast and everything else, and I can't remember what the first actual podcast was after that. But I do know we were in the sort of twenties and thirties of people. Listening, listening to it yeah. and then I was very pleased and went up to a hundred and I was just saying uh only a few days ago to you that one of our podcasts hit 133 no hit 333 hits in the first six days yeah there, there's definitely people out there that are listening to us Bob <laughs> you said an amazing statistic and it's probably gone up a lot now yeah um I think it was two when we hit about several months ago, when you said that on Spotify or or whatever platforms on, we'd hit over sixty thousand. Yeah, I think we're sort of seventy, eighty thousand listens now on on Spotify. Yeah, and so, it depends how people like if people like looking at us and they can w- listen and look at on YouTube or whether like me, I always have podcasts on when I'm driving. I don't listen to the radio well, now. I you listen, listen to this listen one? To podcasts. Yes, I do like to go back. And I, I love our introductory first one. When I listen back to that now, it's with That's fond awesome. memories. So I want to thank all the people who have listened to us, are listening to us, and new people who are coming in for the first time. Because without you and your comments and your kind words and everything else that goes with it, uh, this wouldn't happen. Absolutely. So I want to thank you all. Yeah, me too. I second that, Bob. And I want to thank you for coming here every week and doing this with me. You're welcome. Vice versa. And it, one thing I always want to think about, you have such wonderful... Now, if you were to talk to YouTube visitors, uh, sorry, pe- people go to YouTube, you would see what I'm going to say now. Uh Wonderful array of colourful colours. I try. <laughs> Blue and, <laughs> and all the different colours and all the different... Uh, you're very, very colourful uh, images. Yes, I like to think so. I, I used to struggle with that. I don't know if I come to that. first place, but you still very colourful. Yeah, and, and I have red in my therapy room, which is a no-go. Oh, yeah. A lot of people say you shouldn't have red in your therapy room, but me being, you know, controversial, I do like a bit of red, Yeah. 
Well, maybe that's an assumption. So that leads us on to the topic. Read it out again, could you? The topic is judgments and assumptions within the therapy process. I think we all make judgments. That's that's your number one statement. That that's me throwing it in the <laughs> ring. I think anybody that says that they don't judge other people aren't necessarily telling the whole truth because I think we all do judge to a certain extent. Even if it's judging through comparison and comparing ourselves to to somebody else. So that that is what I call a truism. In other okay. words, in other words, it is true. I'm, way, I'm, I'm up for that then. <laughs> The way we think, the way that we have been programmed, the cultures that we live in, but more the, the way or way we've been programmed and think, is always a lot of the time. In fact, I think mostly in the world's word, what the world of judgments and assumptions. Like for example, you just said very smoothly, which I liked when you said, "Oh, I have, I even have read in my." therapy room and xxx lots of people don't think or oh, whatever said that and you yeah. said that's a series of assumptions yes yeah so we we it's impossible actually to 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 talk without assumptions and judgments the bit though is is uh i think it's different in the therapy room i think we do think in judgments and assumptions absolutely we think in positive positive judgments we think in negative judgments yeah we have a continuum of positive and negative assumptions um so all that i believe is taken as well now in the job of a professional therapist if you allow the treatment and clinical direction to go are based on your assumption and the consequence of that negative or positive effective therapy may well not happen yeah I agree. So that's what I mean. In the, I'm talking about in a therapeutic context, yeah. and and um, you know, automatically. And I know you do the same. <clears throat> you talk to me on these podcasts. I will always, you know, it's ne there's never things a hundred percent. But as much as I can, I'll say. And is that how it is for you? Yeah. Is that how you see it? Yeah. I was. Because I've just literally written down the check in. I will often check in with my clients that what I'm saying, you know, is is right or relevant to what they're saying or whatever. Yeah. You know, so many. The, in fact, you it's an interesting one. Going back to we don't know which podcast it was. Was it the last one? I think it might have been the last one. Actually, I can't remember which one. You it was right at the end, and you were saying you were a therapist and that didn't plan your sessions anymore. Yes. Yeah. And it was in context of something in that. I mean, what I don't, I don't want to say this out of context. It was in, yeah. I can't remember it. Right. Now, it was probably that as a, an inexperienced therapist, I used to plan my therapy and have lots of things, whereas I don't do that anymore. Yeah. And I think most beginning therapists do that. Yes. Many experienced therapists still do that because it's a safety anchor for them. I was just going to say it's safety and security. Yeah, it was for me. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I mean, I often think, you know, don't plan them, but I do think about the where we're going and clinical direction and everything else. Um, but what, what I, where I was going is that, you know, there are many, many therapists who make assumptions about treatment directions without checking anything out with their clients. Yeah. And then they end, and then therapy goes the way that the therapist wants it to go rather than a co created process yes yeah absolutely which, which isn't helpful and i think that that was potentially where i was going as an inexperienced therapist because being honest about it i think there were certain places that i was scared of going with a client oh, oh, oh. yeah well yeah for lots of different reasons I'm yeah sure. yeah hmm. so i think it's really important that some co-created discussions that we check out assumptions that doesn't mean that we don't have treatment plans and we don't think where we're going and xxx uh, but i think it's important to have uh, a co-created process 
Now, Eric Berner was the creator of transaction analysis. And before you created transaction analysis and that term, what it all means, that model, he was very much a devout psychoanalyst. And he, and he moved away from psychoanalysis about mid 1950s. And he created this, um, this model of transaction analysis. And one of the reasons he gives in some of his very, very early books and early interviews on pod, you can find it on YouTube, um, talking about some of the principles beyond transaction analysis, he said, well, I want, it was very important for me uh, transaction analysis comes from an adult adult position. What I mean by that, or what I think he means, is a co-created process around contracts. Yeah. And not like psychoanalysis is and or the major principles, which is very interpretive and very much more um a one up, one down position. Yeah. And I think if we if we come from a one up, one down position, we're more likely um, the therapy will be fed by assumptions rather than an equal, rather than equality, really. Yes, yeah, yeah, I agree, absolutely. And again, you know, I know we touched on this in the, the podcast last week, but I'm I'm different outside of the therapy room as me, Jackie, than what I am inside the therapy room as a therapist. And I know that I do make judgments and assumptions around certain things. Like if I was walking down the street and there was a group of teenagers, I would cross over the road so as not to walk past them because I've got certain thoughts and feelings about groups of teenagers. Oh. So we we do it. I think it's a, it's a protection mechanism. Yeah. It's, it's something that we do do in the outside world. Yeah. Well, you're absolutely right, but you're absolutely correct. Yeah. And that means we are bound to maybe do that in our professional lives and yeah. the therapy room as well however this is the difference i think and that is we are paid psychotherapists we've been trained for goodness knows how long we have a duty of care to clients and mo and very importantly it's important we think clinically with our clients yeah not like walking down the road and sit seeing x we're not just like going to Costa's and have a cup of tea. Absolutely. We're not just, we are, when we go into our therapy room, we have a different hat. Yes, 100%. Yeah. And we should have, as much as we can, I believe, have a non assumption hat on. Yes. Yeah. And that, I, I do check in with my clients an awful lot. I'm not sure whether it was said in training or not, but there was something about think alien. Do you yes. know what I mean? When somebody's yeah. talking to you, it's literally questioning, am I right in thinking that you mean this or that rather than just assuming then that's what they meant? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we're in a different space when we're in our therapy room. Yeah. That doesn't mean, doesn't mean we leave the, the spirit of Bob behind, but what it does mean is that I put a, a clinical hat on. Yes. When I enter into my therapy room yeah and i think that is a professional and b imperative and c protective to me and the client yeah 100 percent, absolutely i can remember because i suppose it works both ways as well us making assumptions and the, the client making assumptions about the things that we're saying yes, or doing always and i can remember when i first started and when I saw clients from the Institute when I first started and I was doing some business cards. You needed business cards that you could give out. And I put my picture on it and you said that that's not, you know, sometimes a good idea because the clients can make assumptions based on the, the picture of you. They yeah. Will yeah. And according I'd never even thought of that. Yeah. And according to their history, um, their assumptions, well, put it this way, their assumption will be led by their history. Yes, yeah. And I suppose, you know, if we're honest with this, do we make assumptions when we first meet our clients? Always. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yes, we do. And what my plea is to professionals and, you know, even, you know, people started to train to be therapists in that professional role is 
to, to be aware that we're making assumptions and sometimes we aren't aware of that because we don't think this way um but my plea is for clinicians to start thinking this way and to reflect on our assumptions that we've made clinically yes yeah not is that not that we don't make assumptions because the definition we do yeah but to to think about things clinically you know you open the door to a client that you've perhaps phoned you up or you're going to have an assessment with them and you open the door and they're dressed all in black for example just like a goth it would be very odd if you didn't have an assumption yeah or you'd make some judgment or you'd there'd be a reaction now all that i think is very normal Yes. However, if you are in the role of being a psychotherapist, I think you need to reflect on your reaction and the clinical, um, how the clinical world might pan out. Yes. Yeah, because body language and the words that we use and everything, it's all up for interpretation. <laughs> all the time. Yeah, I, you know, I, I do use humour in the therapy room, but I'm very mindful of how it can be interpreted by the other person. Oh. 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 Yeah. Yeah, and then there's positive judgment, by the way. Yes, yeah. There's negative judgment. Most of, a lot of the clients we work with have been brought up on, with very little explicit positive judgment. Yeah. Yeah, and it's difficult for them to accept that a lot of the time as well because they are so unused to, yeah, yeah. And that's what I mean by clin the clinical road we go down. Yeah. So I think when you are saying to somebody, you know, I, I like you or, or whatever it is in the therapeutic process, to think immediately like you just thought, by the way, which is, oh, in your head, you don't have to say it, Oh, they might have find this difficult to take in because of their history. And what does that mean in the here and now? And do we inquire on this? Do we help the person be aware of this? No. So there's a clinical thinking. Yes. The yeah. process. Not that we don't make assumptions. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about embracing the fact that as human beings we do make assumptions and judgments but just being mindful of how that shows up in the therapy room because I, I think what you're saying you know I'm not I don't like using big words I don't understand big words myself so if I went to a therapist that was using lots of big words I wouldn't understand half the stuff they were saying do you know what I mean so for somebody to make assumptions that you understand the language of psychotherapy you could lose a client. Yeah, Same as, you know, you could potentially dumb it down for somebody that would understand it. Or you could say, um, as a therapist, I'm aware that I'm perhaps talking, you know, therapeutic language here or whatever it is. Yeah. Is that okay for you or, or, or just that mean you might feel whatever yeah yeah I think you know when I've got my flip chart out with some people it's only recently that I I've kind of been aware of the fact that I could come across as kind of school teacherish. no you Jackie I know I when I get my pen out there's no stopping me but you know <laughs> that some people could have you know certain feelings and thoughts around that yeah no no it would be odd if some people didn't. Well, I'd like to think so, because I do do it in a humorous way. And I always say, do you mind if I draw a diagram? I love a diagram. So, yeah, I, I don't just get up there and do it. I'm very open in the therapy room. Yeah. Yeah. So, as you know, because you've been th through the process yourself, that when we train people to psychotherapists, they have to train and develop clinical competencies um, before they could start their placements as a beginning psychotherapist. You know, a very nerve-wracking experience, if I remember it rightly. Clinical <laughs> competency is like working. <laughs> the whole weekend was geared up to the clinical competencies. 
<laughs> like working with inquiry, achievement of involvement, working behind the client and various competencies that make up the nuances of a therapeutic relationship. Um, but in it, and I'm not sure now, it's, it's a long time to look at those clinical competencies, if one of them is about not have, not using assumptions, I'm not sure now, but um, I'd be teaching that. I'm not sure it's in the clinical competencies evaluation, but I would be talking to trainees about the dangers yeah. of working from assumptions and specifically hidden assumptions. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because the other person never know, doesn't know in the first place you're even thinking about them. Absolutely, yeah. And again, it's one of those wonderful situations that happen all the time in the therapy room. We're, we're bringing our background up in the assumptions and the judgments that we're making. It's all our own frame of reference with whatever's happening, and they're doing exactly the same thing with us. And it's impossible for it not to be that way because yeah. we are histories, we are references, we are cultural heritage and everything else. But the more we can move to a co-created position, I think yeah. the road to effective psychotherapy is more likely. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's building that therapeutic relationship. Oh, you know, if we're openly talking about, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you completely then. I thought you were talking about X, Y, and Z and just clarifying it in the conversation rather than just running with it oh. and presuming that you've understood what they're saying. Oh. I check in an awful lot with my clients, I think. I think that's the way to go. Yeah. Uh, it's not that we don't, people, therapists, you know, we're all people are all you and all. We all live in these worlds of assumptions, judgments, but when we're working clinically, I think we need to, if possible, uh, move towards a more co creative position than, you know, the other road of yeah. assumptions and judgments, which actually could well up, put up blocks to effective psychotherapy. Yeah. Yeah. And, you, you know, it's some of that, as you were saying that, I was thinking about, you know, misunderstandings that happen in the, the therapy room. You, you know, sometimes when something's been misunderstood and it needs to be clarified or whatever, mm. you know, that's the situation. I think when it first happened with me in the therapy room, I felt really uncomfortable about it, that they'd misunderstood and made assumptions about what I was saying. And it was completely not the way it was intended to come across yeah mm. but some clients would have not brought that up they potentially could have just left the room and that would have been it let's take the use of silence in psychotherapy as an example Ooh, we don't like silence so the whole training client-centered counseling or therapy for people who listen to this they're trained in staying behind the clients right um psychoanalysis they're trained to use interpretation rather than co-creation. And for some people, by the way, silence clients I'm thinking of here um, uh, can experience verb is not saying anything, even though it comes from clinical judgment, by yeah. the way. And I can give lots of principles behind the clinical judgment actually is punishing. Mm. Yeah, because that's how their history was. I can I can relate and understand that. Yeah, yeah. And in psychoanalysis, when um, there's interpretation rather than co-creation, um, the uh, client, in this sense, might feel like they're being interrogated, or the person's not acknowledging them, or many other things. Yeah. Um, so a lot of our therapeutic modalities, modalities have clinical reasons, but actually, unless they're checked out on how do you feel, what's going on in this sense, I think effective psychotherapy comes harder. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it, like I said, it, it baffles me all of this stuff. But we, we do when you look at it from that point of view, you know, we are making assumptions every every communication that we oh. have with people. Yeah. 
transaction analysis, client centered therapy, extensional psychotherapy, gestalt psychotherapy, CBT. We could go on and on. Yeah. They're all built on theoretical assumptions. Yeah. For example. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, from the beginning, we're in the world of assumptions. You know, uh, just think of all cultural scripts, neurodiversity. We could go on and on and on. I have a plea for therapists to think of human discourse and co-creation or co-creativity between therapist and client as the way forward. Yeah, I think that's it on the jingle that we have at the beginning of our podcast, isn't it? The co-creative yeah, conversation. Like we are now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think therapy is, you know, better for that type of discourse yeah. rather than often assumptions or hidden assumptions or um, aspects that don't get talked about. Yeah. Like, at all therapist. Yeah, because as a as a I don't I don't know whether it's a community or a race or whatever it is, but we're really good with labels as well. You know, we, we put labels on I people mean, and defining people. Yeah, and with, with that there's judgments and assumptions. All the time. Yeah. And you know, perhaps in the podcast we could say def defining, judging, assuming. Yeah. All the they're all in the I think the no nos for effective psychotherapy in a working relationship with clients. Yeah. Relationships generally, really. We shouldn't be making assumptions on people generally in relationships. It's not conducive with an authentic relationship, is it? Not at all. And in the clinical world, I um, really make a plea for people listening to this to reflect on yeah. you know, what, what we're talking about here and checking out and co creation. As a way forward, maybe. Another one. Our third year one. I know, yeah. I'm Our still, third I'm still, year one anniversary. Believe, I've not had a drink yet, but don't make <laughs> assumptions or judgments. It's not gin and tonic, it's water. <laughs> it's sports. Well, I haven't got water or anything here, but certainly I want to toast you and myself and everybody listening. Yeah. Cheers, uh, Bob. Yeah, cheers. And to the future and many more. So what we're going to talk about in the next one, what no exciting idea. things, how to deal with self-criticism in therapy. Sort that's a good one on. for me. That's a good sort one of, for me. <laughs> sort of leads on, doesn't it? Yeah, that's at the top of my list of things that I do and what I'm attempting to not do, self-criticise and self-judgment. So, yeah, it leads on. Yeah. I look forward to that and... Uh, I look forward to our many podcasts and uh, months ahead. Absolutely. Look after yourself, Bob. And you. Uh, Take, bye -bye. Care. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.